Today we're going to read one of my favorite books by Attached Up F, Then Comes G, All Out of Breath. H is tangled up with I, J and K are about to cry. Good job. Good job, friends. Now that is something you can try to do. Singing also helps you learn it in a different way. So families, feel free to sing it. Count the number. When you're learning about your alphabet and all the different letters, you can count the letters in your name. For example, here's my... Hi, friends and families. This is Eamon Fitzgerald with Fayette County Public Schools Preschool Department and First Five Lex, bringing you another circle time for the month of December. This month's book we're reading is brought to you by Penguin House Publishers, so we're very thankful for, to them for letting us read this. It is The Mitten, a Ukrainian folk tale adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. Here we go. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother, Baba, didn't want to knit white mittens. If you drop one of them in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nicky wanted snow white mittens, and finally, Baba made them. After she finished, she said, When you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound. But then I will look to see if you have your snow white mittens. So off Nicky went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. A mole, tired of tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm, and just the right size, he decided to stay. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten, and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move in to the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be. But what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged too many times its size, but Baba's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on the top of the great bear's nose. The bear 
tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Hachoo! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound. And then she saw that he had his new mittens. The end. Great job, friends. That was The Mitten by Jan Brett. Special thanks to Penguin House Publishing for letting us read that. Uh, it's very nice that they're letting us share this book in this, in this wild times. So we have some more activities for you, so enjoy. It's song time, and the song we're going to sing today is called Twinkle Twinkle Traffic Light. Most of you all may know the tune to it. It is to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So you've probably heard the tune before. I thought it'd be a good time to sing this song just because this, this is a very busy time of year. And I thought going over the rules of traffic lights and when to cross the street and everything would be a great opportunity uh, to, to go over it with your kids and families. So there's a couple hand movements with this song. So when you hear red, that means stop. So when we do red, it's gonna be stop. When you see or hear green, your green means go. And then yellow, yellow means wait, all right? We always wait, even if you're late, all right? So here we go. I'm going to sing it through one time, and then feel free to join along with me as we sing it again. Here we go. Twinkle, twinkle, traffic light, standing on the corner bright. Red means stop, green means go, yellow means wait, even if you're late. Twinkle, twinkle, traffic light, standing on the corner bright. Good job, everybody. One more time. Here we go. Twinkle, twinkle, traffic light, standing on the corner bright. Red means stop, green means go, yellow means wait, even if you're late. Twinkle, twinkle, traffic light, standing on the corner bright. Good job. Thank you, friends. It's activity time, and because we read the book The Mitten by Jan Brett, I thought it would be fun to do an activity using mittens. So, get your mittens handy. All right, so you get your mittens. And for adults, this is also fun, so get mittens, or you can also use socks, or oven mitts. In my case, I brought oven mitts. So the nice thing about this activity is you can do it with things that you already have around your house. And so the big difference about this activity is you're going to be doing things that you already do. You're just going to be wearing mittens. For example, you can play ball or catch or roll using mittens. It kind of changes up everything and gives it a whole new tactile feel. And kids have to focus a little more because they're using mittens again and adults as well. So another thing you can do is instead of playing the regular pots and pans drums, you can use mittens and play the pots and pans also. Now, families, if it gets a little too loud with pots and pans, here's a tip for you. Get a pillow and put it inside or a stuffed animal or a blanket or a towel. And what it does is it helps muffle the sound. All right. So kids are now knowing that also. So they can also put pillows and things in there to muffle the sound so it's not too loud. But that's something very fun and easy to do that you all can do with without or with mittens on. So oven mitts are also very fun and they're easy to do and they're really big and, and fun for kids to wear. Another thing to try and do is when you're wearing your mittens, try and color a picture, all right? It's very interesting to see how hard and how much you have to focus more when you're using mittens or gloves. So other things you can do, try this. Now this one will require some assistance, but try brushing your teeth when you're wearing mittens. This goes for adults also. This is really fun and enjoyable and know that you might have to brush them without the mittens just to make sure you get all your teeth clean. So get your mittens out. Remember, if you don't have mittens, you can use oven mitts, you can use socks and have fun. Think of creative ways to try and do things wearing mittens. And as always, 
have fun with it, and talk to each other about it as you're doing the activity and afterwards. Thank you again, friends. This has been fun. I'll see you at the next circle time.